Hi, welcome to Holy Habitus. My name is Phil and today we're in the one year Bible reading plan for May the 9th. And it's got a wonderful story in 1 Samuel 15 about how um, the Philistines, the enemies of the people of God, have captured the Ark of the Covenant in battle. And they cut this Ark of the Covenant off and they think, where are we going to put it? Well, we'll stick it in with Dagon, our God, in his temple. So they put it in there. But obviously, as you can imagine, God's not very happy about having to play second fiddle to Dagon, this upstart god of the Philistines. And so when the next morning comes, the, the, the priests go into the temple and find that the statue of Dagon is flat on its face before the Ark of the Covenant. Which would be embarrassing, so they lift it up, put it back on its feet, dust it down, hope no one notices. Carry on as business as usual, but the next morning they come down after breakfast, open the doors of the temple, and, and there again is Dagon flat on his face. And he's not on his face because his head's broken off and his hands, and they're on the threshold as far away from the Ark of the Covenant as possible to get. So it's a clear indicator of the supremacy and the superiority of the God of Israel, Yahweh, over Dagon or any God. And yet there's this fascinating detail in verse 5 of chapter 5, which says this. That is why to this day neither the priests of Dagon nor anyone who enters the temple of Dagon in Ashdod will step on its threshold. Which is crazy. In other words, they, they've started to see the threshold as sacred because the broken hands and feet of Dagon were there. Rather than giving worship to the one true God, the superior God of Israel, no, they carry on worshipping Dagon in his humiliated state. And um, it, it's a story about human nature really of how we have these wonderful exercises in missing the point. But that's not just a, a, a fault or an idiocy of the, of the Philistines. The Israelites do the same. And we read of their stupidity in those passages, but also in the psalm for today, Psalm 106, where it, it rehearses the, the repetitive stupidity of the people of Israel in terms of turning away from God or doubting him or, or worshipping other idols. Verse 20 of 106, um, 106 psalm says this, They traded their glorious God for a statue of a grass-eating bull. I mean, what's that about? How's that for stupid? But time and time again they do it. And it's not just the Philistines, it's not just the Israelites, it's us, it's human beings. We have this endless tendency to drift away from the one true God towards idols which we think will help us. And we do it again and again, and we keep on ending up in the ditch, flat on our faces. The Alcoholics Anonymous have a saying, a definition of insanity, which says that insanity is doing the same things over and over and over but expecting a different outcome. Discipleship is really a recovery program for those addicted to idols and we need to ruthlessly weed out those idolatries from our lives and focus again on God but we need to keep on remembering, remembering, remembering his mighty acts, focusing, focusing, focusing on him again otherwise we'll be drawn off into our sinful folly. This week the challenge is to have a bit of an idle detox and just observe yourself and think are there any areas in my life where idols still hold sway? It might be that there's a, something equivalent to a sacred threshold which you step over and you might notice it and think goodness am I still paying tribute to an idol that's been vanquished in my life? Has God brought about a mighty victory in my life over something in my life and yet still I'm skipping over the threshold because I'm paying homage to a God who doesn't exist? That's not a good way to go. And as you do so, refocus, re-remember re the one true God and worship him alone.